Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math. Today, my lesson is about congruent figures. Our objectives today are that you will be able to name corresponding angles and corresponding sides of congruent figures, and then you will use that to be able to identify congruent figures. Here's what I'd like you thinking about today as I proceed through the lesson. How do you know if two figures are congruent? Vocabulary that you need to understand today is the word congruent. Figures that have the same shape and size are congruent. We'll expand on that by saying that angles are congruent when they have the same measure. Sides are congruent when they have the same length. So we're going to use these ideas of congruent to build on identifying congruent figures. Special note, the orientation of the figure does not affect the congruency. We'll explain about that in a minute. So here I have four sets of figures, two circles, two trapezoids, two hearts, and two cubes. And I want you to take a minute and identify which shapes you think are congruent and which shapes are not congruent. So this is just a little practice before we begin the details of the lesson. Go ahead and pause, come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So the first set of figures I'm gonna talk about are the circles. Those are definitely the same shape. They are both circles, but they are clearly not the same size. If I had the diameter or the radius of the circle labeled, we know that they would have different measures. Now let's talk about the trapezoids. The trapezoids, the green one is flipped. If you think about it flipping or folding over, it's, or you could have turned it and moved it. But we're gonna put these in the congruent category because the orientation is different. But if I turned this green one around or flipped it over, it would perfectly fit on top of the orange trapezoid. They have the same shape and they are the same size. The hearts, we're gonna put these in the congruent category because this yellow heart is turned, but if I turned it back, it would sit perfectly on top of the pink heart. And here we have our cubes. The green cube has just been moved over to the right, but we can tell they're both cubes and they both have the same shape. They have the same side length. So those would also be congruent. So again, congruent, same size, same shape, not congruent, different shapes and different sizes. So these are the same shape, but different size. Now let's talk about identifying sides of congruent triangles. We're gonna focus just on triangles for a minute. Concurrent triangles have corresponding sides that are congruent and corresponding angles that are congruent. So here are two triangles, triangle ABC and triangle DEF. We're gonna talk about the specific sides of this triangle first. So corresponding sides, to review what this word means, corresponding sides are matching sides. Students often say to me, well, those sides are corresponding. Yes, they correspond to each other, but that doesn't talk about the congruency. That just talks about their corresponding on different triangles. So you have to be careful. So when we look at this, our corresponding sides, I've color coded them for you. We have side AB, because it goes from A to B, and side D to E are corresponding and congruent. We know that they're congruent because they each side has one of these little tally or tick marks on it. And in geometry, that denotes that they have the same measure. Even though I don't know, know the numerical value of the side, I know that that tally mark means that they do have the same measurement. Then we can see that the triangle sides BC corresponds to EF, it's in the same location of the other triangle, they are corresponding. They're in the corresponding locations and they both have two tally marks on it, so we know they're congruent to each other. And then our third pair of sides are side AC and side DF. They each are yellow, they have, so they're in the corresponding location, that's why I made them yellow, and they have the same measure because they both have three tally marks. 
So this is how you would identify the corresponding sides. They're in corresponding locations. There are the matching sides. Now let's talk about the angles of two congruent triangles. So I have the same triangle ABC and triangle DEF. And now my sides aren't marked, my angles are. So we can see that, again, corresponding angles are the matching angles. So here's angle A and angle D. They are in the matching location. They are the corresponding angles of these two triangles. We know that angle A and angle D are corresponding and congruent. We know they're congruent because they each have one arc in them. Then I have angle B and angle E. They're in the corresponding or matching location, and they have two arcs. The reason angle B and E have two arcs in them is that even though they are congruent to each other, they're a different measure than A and D. So therefore, if it only had one, then it would mean that angle A and B were congruent. That can happen. That could be true. In this case, I have one arc, two arc, and then C has three arcs. So that means I have a triangle with three different angle measures. So we have one more pair of angles to identify. We have angle C and angle F. They are in the matching or corresponding location. They are congruent because they each have three arcs. So now we want to be aware of something. If two triangles have three pairs of corresponding sides that are congruent, we can state that the triangles are congruent. However, this does not hold true for the angles. If two triangles have three pairs of corresponding angles that are congruent, then the triangles may or may not be congruent. I often say to students that if you have an equilateral triangle, what means all three sides are congruent and all three angles are congruent, you could have an equilateral triangle that is small and fits in the palm of your hand. You could also make an equilateral triangle that is so large it surrounds a building. An equilateral triangle will always have equal, three equal angles of 60 degrees. Remember, a triangle, no matter how large it is, the three angles have a sum of 180 degrees. So therefore, an equilateral triangle always has three 60 degree angles but could be two different sizes. So these are not congruent triangles. They are the same shape, but they are not the same size. So remember, even though the corresponding angles have to be congruent, just because they are doesn't mean they're congruent. They must also have congruent sides. So let's look at this in a formal definition, in a formal picture. Congruent figures are two figures that are congruent when their corresponding sides and corresponding angles are congruent. So both of these must be true. Another way to write it is with this mathematical symbol. It's an equal sign with the little squiggle on top. This means congruent. So triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF because the corresponding angles A and D, B and E, C and F are all congruent and the corresponding sides AB and DE, BC and EF, and AC and DF are congruent. All right, I'm going to ask you to pause and identify which two squares are congruent. Please come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. So I hope you picked square X and square Z. Couple of things. We've told that these are all squares. We have square X, square Y, and square Z. We know by now that squares have four equal measures. Their angles are four equal measures of 90 degrees. So if a square is a square, it has four congruent sides and four congruent angles. So therefore, we're just looking to see which squares have the same side measure. So we have 
side here is 4 and we know that all four sides of the square are 4 inches. Here we know it can't be congruent to this. They have the same shape, but they're not the same size because each side here is 6 inches. And even though square Z has a different orientation, it's been turned, we can see that a side length is 4 inches. So all the corresponding sides would be 4 inches, and all the corresponding angles would be 90 degrees because it's a square. So therefore, square X and square Z are congruent. Here's another one for you to try. I'm going to tell you in this statement that the parallelograms are congruent. Now I'd like you to determine what is the perimeter of parallelogram WXYZ. Go ahead and pause. Come back when you're ready. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. The solution would be that our corresponding sides are congruent, seeing as we were told they were congruent. So you didn't need to identify if they were, you were told that they were. So side AD corresponds to side WZ, even though the orientation is different, if we turned this parallelogram, side WZ correspond matches. They're in matching or corresponding locations and are both 13 inches. Seeing as this is a parallelogram, we know that opposite sides are parallel and congruent so we can then identify that side XY is 13 inches. It must be the same measure as side WZ. And since WX is 28 inches, we know that the opposite side that's parallel is also 28 inches. And by definition, the perimeter is the sum of all sides. So we need to add 13 plus 28 plus 13 plus 28 which is 82. So the perimeter of parallelogram WXYZ is 82 inches. And there you have it. That's our lesson on congruent figures today. I hope that helped clarify the vocabulary as well as the definition and that you'll come back and learn more about transformations and the videos in the playlist. So go ahead and please subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment, and I hope you have a great day.